Hello, good day everyone. I hope you are in a good today. And you are in a math uh, 7 class. So, what is the objective of this lesson? At the end of this session, you should be able to first, describe what it means to measure. Second, describe the development of measurement from the primitive to the present. Third, Describe the two standard system of measure and approximate the measure of quantities, particularly length, mass, and capacity. Let us start our lesson by answering the following trivia questions. So let us have this one. What is the largest barangay in Montalban Rodriguez Rizal? So we all know there is a lot of barangays here in Montalban Rodriguez Rizal. And using this political map, you can see all those barangays. So we have the Puray, we also have Mascap, San Rafael, San Isidro, Makabud, San Jose, Burgos, we also have Jeronimo, Mangahan, and Rosario. Now, by observing this political map, can we know or can we tell what is the largest barangay? Okay, definitely yes. Without its exact measurement or exact length of each barangay, pwede nating sabihan or pwede nating malaman kung ano ba yung largest barangay by simply observing this given political map. By the way, our school, San Isidro National High School, is located at Barangay San Isidro. So, dito po natin matatagpuan ang ating school. Okay? So, go back dun sa ating question. What is the largest barangay in Montalban Rodriguez Rizal by observing the given political map? Okay, very good. So, that is Barangay Puray or the Puray Park. Okay, next, let us have the second trivia question. Okay, we all know we have a lot of planets in our solar system. Okay, uh, can you give some of those planets that you already know? Okay, yes, very good. So, we have planet Earth, planet Mars, planet Venus, and so on and so forth. The question is, what is the largest planet in our solar system? Let me give you this illustration to be able for us to picture out what is our or what is a solar system look like. Okay? So this is our solar system. So as you can see, the sun or the planet sun is surrounded by the different kind of planets. Okay? So we have Jupiter, Uranus, Earth, Mercury, the Venus, the Mars, the Saturn, and the Neptune. Now, what do you think is the largest planet? Can you guess? Okay, the largest planet in our solar system is Jupiter. Now, to be able for us to prove that planet Jupiter is the largest planet, we need to find or tell the attribute of this planet. So, when we say attribute, ito yung mga bagay na sinusukat natin para i-proof na yung isang bagay ay largest talaga or smallest talaga. Now, ano ba, ano, ano ba yung mga sinusukat natin? So, we get or we measure the mass and the length. Okay, so the mass of the Jupiter, the planet Jupiter, is 1.8986 times 10 raised to 27 power kilogram. So, ganun siya kabigat. While the length or the equatorial radius, so when we say equatorial, yung paikot, kasi, di ba, uh, uh, pa-circle yung shape ng, ng mga planet. So, pag sinabi natin equatorial, paikot or palibot. Uh, okay, so, its radius is uh, 71,492 kilometer. So, ganun kalapad or ganun yung sukat niya na paikot. Okay, and it also says, eh, that Jupiter is almost 11 times the size of the Earth. So, yung sukat daw ni Jupiter ay 11 times. So, gagawa ka ng 11 size of Earth to be able for you to make the, the measure of the Jupiter, the planet Jupiter. So, it goes like this. So, ito po yung ating planet Jupiter. And then, as you can see, 11 times yung kanyang 
uh, size uh, ng ating planet Earth. So, ganun siya kalaki. Okay? Now, what have you noticed about uh, what have you noticed about what we did earlier? Okay? Ito mga pagsagot natin ng mga questions. Ano yung napansin ninyo? Okay. What kind did we use to answer the given question? Meron ba tayong uh, skills na ginamit para masagutan yung mga uh, mga questions na na-impose sa atin? Okay, very good. So, we estimate or we measure uh, some object para malaman natin or masagutan natin yung mga given questions. Okay, so our topic for this day is all about measurement. Let us define first, what is measurement? First, it says, finding a number that shows the size or amount of something. So don't forget this clue word, shows the size. So to be able for you to prove or to measure something or one object, you need to show the size, its attribute. Ano ba yung mass niya, yung length niya? yung kanyang uh, capacity. So, you need to give those things para uh, talagang minimeasure mo yung isang bagay or to prove na you use the measuring uh, method or technique. Next, is a number that characterize an object or event which can be compared with other object or events. You cannot measure one thing kung hindi tayo uh, makakapag-compare. Like kanina, yung example natin kanina. I show some pictures like in barangay, barangays in Montalban. Pinakita ko sa inyo yung political map para i-compare ninyo which among those barangays yung pinaka-largest and also the picture of our solar system. So, given doon or present doon yung mga planets and then by observing the features of each planet, malalaman nyo ano ba yung largest planet in our solar system. So, it's all about comparing or uh, you need to compare with one another or with other objects. Next, is the act of determining targets, size, length, weight, capacity of or other aspect. So, uh, nagdi-determine tayo, kailangan mong malaman or ma-determine yung kanyang size, yung kanyang length, kanyang weight, and the capacity of that given object. Next, can be written using many different units. We use a lot of different units in measuring an object. So, as this lesson goes, ah, malalaman natin ano-ano ba yung mga different units na pwede natin gamitin. Okay, so let us have a historical background about this measurement. So, the first is all about primitive units of measure. So, when we say primitive, ito yung times during an, uh, during our ancestor, yung mga sinaunang tao, mga Babylonians, mga Egyptians. Okay, do you think they use the same tools or things na ginagamit natin sa measurement natin ngayon? Or, uh, meron silang sariling tools na ginagamit para ma-measure yung isang bagay. And another thing, primitive units, also known as non-standard units of measure. So, bakit ba siya tinawag na non-standard? Okay, so let us know kung bakit. Okay, so it says, the units of measure used in ancient times were chosen for convenience rather than accuracy. So, they use these units of measure for convenience rather than accuracy. So, kung ano yung madali sa kanila. So, hindi na sila uh, nag-isip pa ng komplikadong bagay, but then, uh, mas pinili nila kung ano yung mas convenience. Hindi na importante kung accurate ba yung, uh, yung measure neto. Bas, as long as na convenience sa kanila, ayun yung kanilang ginamit. Okay, next. Distances were judged by time, by eye, or by pace. And sizes were compared in terms of to stones, trees, or objects common to their surroundings. So, yung distances ng mga bagay, for example, ay yung land na pag-aari nila. So, they use it or they measure it by using the eye. So, uso sa kanila yung, uh, yung connotation na... Uh, yung mga natatanaw mo or lahat ng natatanaw mo, akin yan lahat. So, using their eye. O kaya, uh, yung boundaries ng every land na pagmamayari nila, gumagamit sila ng mga stones or ng mga trees. For example, 
uh, mula sa puno ng mangga hanggang sa puno ng uh, ng makopa ayan yung uh, lupa na pag-aari ko so yun yung mga ginagamit nila para ma-indicate kung hanggang saan yung lawak ng pag-aari nilang lupa next Historical records indicate that the first unit of length were based on people's hand, feet, and arms. So, ito yung mga tools na ginamit nila. They use the parts of their body. So, ginamit nila yung kanilang kamay, yung kanilang paa, and even their arms. Ginamit nila yon para masukat kung gaano nga ba kahaba or ano ba yung length ng mga bagay-bagay na kailangan nilang sukatin in their times. Okay, so during Babylonians and Egyptians, these are the measuring uh, ba, tools or uh, object na ginamit nila. And uh, katulad na sinabi ko kanina, they use, their, they use the parts of their bodies. So like the palm. So to be able for them to measure the length of any object or of an object, they use their palm. So ito yon, yung lapad ng ating palad. They use also the hand span. Yung distance from the from the thumb hanggang dun sa pinaka uh, small finger natin. So, ayun yun. So, length din ang sinusukat dyan. And also, the cubit. So, paano nga ba kinukuha yung cubit? So, mula dito sa ending part ng ating finger, ng middle finger, hanggang sa siko. So, that is equivalent to one cubit eh. And also, they use their arm, arm span. So, paano yung arm span? So, i-widen lang nila yung kanilang mga arm. So, that is the arm span. Okay, and then pace. Ano yung pace? When you say pace, eh, isang hakbang. Okay? So, ayun yung pace na ginamit nila. And then foot. Okay, yung sukat ng isang paa. And then yard. Paano nila sinusukat yung yard? Mula dito sa middle part ng leeg hanggang dito sa pinaka middle part naman ng ating palm o ng ating palad. So, ganun nila sinusukat yung yard. Now, uh, since uh, Filipino has their own uh, way para i-measure yung mga bagay-bagay, so, during Filipino ancestor or our Filipino ancestors use the word dangkal. So, para siyang, ano, kahalin tulad ni handspan, si dipa, armspan. Okay? Si dangkal, uh, hand. Si dipa, arm. Okay, hakbang, that is the pace. Yung talampakan is the foot. And yung dakot. So, kung ano yung makukuha ng dalawa natin palad or ng mga kamay natin, so, ayun yung dakot na pag-measure ng mga Filipino ancestor. Some non-standard units have became standardized. Again, let me uh, let me clear the word non-standard. Bakit nga ulit naging non-standard? Kasi uh, dahil parts of the body ang ginagamit nila to measure an object, alam natin na magkakaiba yung length ng ating palm, ng ating arm, ng ating foot, di ba? So, parang nagkakaroon ng dayaan. So, hindi talaga siya accurate. Kaya nga sabi, kung ano lang yung madali para sa kanila, ayun yung ginamit nila. Regardless kung pare-pareho yung size or hindi pare-pareho, basta, ayun yung sukatan nila. Okay? So, kaya sinabi yung non-standard units kasi wala talaga siyang exact na measure. And, syempre, dahil na, natututo yung mga tao, some of the non-standard units naging standardized or naging accurate na siya. Okay? Let us know. So, this is the transition period from non-standard to standard. Paano ba naging standard yung ilan sa mga non-standard? Okay? So, let us compare the measured, measuring technique before and yung measuring technique natin ngayon. Yung hand before na ginagamit, that is equivalent to 4 inches now. So, unti-unti siyang nagkakaroon ng accuracy. Okay? Yung isang foot dati, ngayon ay 12 inches na. ba? Diba? So, one foot is equivalent to 12 inches. Isang yard is equivalent to 3 feet or 36 inches. How it come? Okay? Na nangyari or naging equivalent siya sa into 36 inches. We all know that 3 feet 
or sabi dito, 1 foot is equivalent to 12 inches. Eh, yung 1 yard ay equivalent to 3 feet. So, para makuha mo si 36, 3 times 12, kasi in every foot, meron siyang 12 inches. So, 3 times 12, that is equivalent or equal to 36 inches. So, ayun po yun. Pagka sinabi natin foot, isa lang, singular. Pag sinabi natin feet, dalawa or plural na yung pinag-uusapan. Two or more na siya. Okay? Pero parehong paalang po yung pinag-uusapan natin. Okay? So, now. So, as a times goes by, standard system of measures, nagkaroon tayo ng dalawa. So, first is the US customary or the English system, while the second one is all about metric system. Now, uh, sa dalawang to, meron pa rin talagang mas pinili eh. Okay, so alamin natin, ano ba yung mas convenient na gamitin? Is it the English system or the US customary or the metric system? Let us compare the English system and metric system. In English system, wala siyang base unit, wala din siyang prefixes. When we say prefixes, those are letters na nasa unahan para makabuo ng another word. Okay, later on, mauunawaan natin ano ba yung mga prefixes na tinutukoy. Another thing, sa English system, it requires a lot of memorization and not convenient to use. Bakit? Kasi nga, wala po siyang base unit. Okay, yung base unit kasi, parang yun yung main unit na kapag ka pinag-usapan or measure yung length, uh, meron siyang base or meron siyang panggagaling. Meron parang pinaka, uh, pinaka base natin na dapat uh, itong unit na to para lang to kay length. Ganun. Tapos, i-add up mo lang si prefixes para makabuo ka ng iba't ibang unit of measure. Eh, sa English system, wala silang ganun kasi nga wala silang base unit. So, kailangan nilang i-memorize lahat ng mga nabuong word under English system. And hindi siya ganun ka-convenient. Kasi nga, ang mga Pilipino, may, or some of the Filipinos ay mga ano sila, uh, hindi sila ganun or hindi sila magaling or ano ba, hindi nila masyadong pinagtutuon na ng pansin yung pag memorize So, mas gusto nila kung ano yung mas madali, diba? Uh, so, kaya dahil nga need lot of memorization si English system, uh, ayaw nilang gamitin or kakaunti lang yung gumagamit ng English system. Ang gamit na gamit talaga in measuring object ay yung metric system. Ano nga ba yung metric system? When we say metric system, meron siyang base unit eh, and meron din siyang prefixes. Dito sa metric system, aalamin mo lang kung ano yung base unit, for example, sa length. Ano ba yung base unit ni length? And then, i-add up mo lang si prefixes para makabuo ka ng different unit of measure. Okay? Another thing, proven to be convenient and ideal to use. To use, sorry. Okay, bakit siya convenient? Kasi nga, ang kailangan mo lang i-memorize ay si base unit at saka prefixes. Si prefixes, yun at yun lang din naman eh, yung mga idinadagdag. Okay? So, mas madali mong ma-memorize or mas, ma o mas madali mo siyang maaalala in your own. So, what are the examples of English system? So, we use inches, pounds, ounce, and mile or etc. Marami pang mga ginagamit. Pero, as you can see nga, wala siyang prefixes. So, own word lang yung ginagamit sa English system. While metric system, we use the prefixes like kilo, hector, Deka, deci, centi, and mili. So, ito yung mga prefixes. Now, ito lang yung aalamin mo mga prefixes. And then, lahat na ng, uh, na mga measuring na gagamitin mo, basta may alam mo yung base unit, mas magiging madali na yun para sa'yo. Okay. So, let us have the first activity titled Identify Me. So, in this activity, you're going to arrange the jumbled letters to identify the term being described. So, let us focus in metric system kasi ito yung mas madali and uh, ito yung gamit na gamit. Sabi nga, mas convenient. Okay? Ano ba yung mga sinusukat natin uh, or ano ba yung mga pinagagamitan natin ng mga measuring or ng measurement? Okay, so number one, it refers to how long something is. Using these jumbled letters, you're going to arrange this to make a word that talks about how long something is or measuring how long something is. Ano ba yung measure natin ng haba? Ano ba yung tawag doon? Okay, so that is 
very good, the length. Okay, so ayun yung isa sa mga minimeasure natin, yung length. So, what is the base unit of length? The base unit of length is meter. Ito lang yung tatandaan mo. Kapag kahaba yung iyong imemeasure, ang tatandaan mo lang ay si base unit which is meter. Now, para magkaroon ka ng iba't ibang unit of syst uh, measure, idadagdag mo lang yung mga prefixes na na sabi natin kanina which are the kilo, hecto, deca, deci, milli, centi, and then add the base unit, meter. So, it will become kilometers, hectometer, centimeter, millimeter. Okay? So, ayun yung mga yon. Next, number two, it refers to the amount of matter in an object. Anong tawag doon? Very good. So, that is the mass. So, mass or the base unit for mass is gram. So, gram po yung ginagamit natin. So, yung bigat ng isang bagay. Okay. So, tandaan lang natin palagi kung ano yung base unit na gagamitin natin in every measuring uh, measuring an object. Okay, next, third. It refers to the amount contained in a figure. So, amount contained in a figure. Using these jumbled letters, arrange it to make your own word that refers to the amount of contained in a figure. Okay, so the answer is capacity. So, the base unit for the word or for capacity is liter. So, liter naman yung ginagamit natin na base unit. So, add up the prefixes. So, it will become ki kiloliter, um, decaliter, deciliter, milliliter, and uh, centiliter. So, those are the unit of measures na ginagamit natin for capacity or in measuring capacity. Next, let us have the second activity entitled Categorize Me. In this activity, you are going to make three columns and group the following objects by categorizing its use. Saan ba natin ginagamit or saan natin pwedeng gamitin yung mga objects na to? So, let us analyze is its object and uh, categorize natin kung ano-ano ba yung ginagamit natin in specific measuring object. An object. Okay, so ito po yung three columns. Okay, I'll give you two minutes para sagutan po ang ating activity. Okay, for the first column, I'll put, I hope na same yung ating magiging sagot. Okay, for the first column, I put these tools. So, these are the ruler measuring Measuring tape, so measuring tape din to, or tape measure, rather. Uh, we, I have caliper and the uh, odometer. So, yung odometer, commonly na nakikita natin to sa mga vehicles. Okay, para sukatin yung uh, haba or kung gaano ba kalayo yung naitakbo ng isang sasakyan. Okay, next. Sa so second column, uh, I put in one group, the uh, bathroom scale, weighing scale, and the triple beam balance. Okay. Next, third column, the measuring cups, uh, measuring spoon rather, and the measuring cup. Now, saan natin or ano ba yung sinusukat natin when we use uh, the ruler, the tape measures, the caliper, and the odometer? Ano yung ating sinusukat or specific na sinusukat using these tools? Okay, very good. So, that is the length. Well, the second column, ano kaya yung sinusukat natin using the bathroom scale, the weighing scale, and the triple beam balance? Very good, the mass. And for measuring spoon and measuring cups, we use these tools to measure the capacity. So, for length, again, the base unit is meter. Mass, the base unit is gram. And for capacity, the base unit is liter. I hope now we have the same answer in this activity. Okay, next, let us proceed to the third um, activity. 
entitled Measure Me. So, we are going to measure or give the unit of measure in each uh, physical, physical quantity. So, ibibigay natin kung ano ba yung sa tingin natin uh, pwede natin gamitin na unit of measure para makuha natin yung sukat ng given object. Okay, so this is the instruction for this activity. Identify the appropriate unit of measure that can be used to the following quantity. Let us have an example. So, for example, I will give the physical quantity and you are going to give what kind of unit measure are you going to use. For example, handkerchief. So, when we say handkerchief, ayun po ay yung panyo na ginagamit natin or yung beam po. Okay, ano kaya sa tingin ninyo yung unit of measure yung gagamitin natin? Ano ba yung susukatin natin? Sukatin ba natin yung bigat, yung length niya ba, o yung capacity niya ba? Ano ba yung appropriate na unit of measure yung pwede natin gamitin? Okay, so we will use the measurement for the length. So, ano yung unit of measure ng length ang pwede natin gamitin kay handkerchief? Very good. So, that is centimeter or it can be inches. Pwede tayong kumamit ng metric system and we can also use uh, the uh, English system. Kung ano yung mas convenient sa inyo. Okay? So, it's your turn. Again, uh, I will give five physical quantity. Number one is length of ball pen. Second is ice cream. Number three, distance from your home to school. Number four, bottled water. And number five, sack of rice. And you're going to give what is the best unit of measure that you're going to use to measure the following physical quantity. Two minutes to answer this activity. Okay, so let us answer number one. So, what unit of measure do, uh, do we use to be able for us to measure the length of the ball pen or to le the length of ball pen? Okay, so the answer is centimeter or inches. Kasi hindi naman siya ganun kahaba, right? So, yung isang ball pen, pwede mo nang gamitin yung un uh, as unit of measure yung centimeter or inches. How about ice cream? Ano ba yung madalas na nakikita natin na tag dun sa mga ice cream cups or yung nakalagay sa lalagyan na ng ice cream? Okay, so very good. So that is gallon or liter. So di ba may mga naka-indicate na unit of measure sa bawat lalagyan na ng ice cream. Okay, third, Distance from home, from your home to school. Pwede ba natin gamitin dito yung centimeter? Pwede bang gamitin dito yung uh, millimeter? Okay, or may mas better unit of measure na pwede natin gamitin. Okay, so we can use the kilometer or mile kasi medyo malayo na. Okay, so kapag ka ginamit natin yung small unit which is millimeter, baka sobrang laki na ng magiging value nun. Unlike na kapag ginamit natin si kilometer or mile, mas appropriate siya. Number four, bottled water. Okay, so we will use liter for unit of measure. Number five, sack of rice. The answer is kilogram. Okay, so one sack of rice is equivalent to how many kilogram? Very good. So that is 50 kilogram. Okay, so, it's conversion time. So, we will convert one object or a measure of one object to another uh, measure of, of, of object. Okay? So, paano ba natin gagawin ang conversion? Okay, let us define first the word conversion. So, when we say conversion, this is the process of converting something from one another or from one thing to another. So, for example, the given in the problem is different to the uh, to your teachers asking for. So, magkaiba. For example, ang given mo ay nasa gram, and your teacher asks you to give uh, to give 
milligram, for example. So, paano yung process in converting? Possible kaya na ganun yung tatanungin or nakalagay sa bawat question? So, let's see kung paano. If there is a question na same dun sa aking tinatanong. Okay, so let's convert bigger unit to smaller unit and vice versa. So, it's either bigger unit yung ibibigay and then you are asked to make it smaller unit or smaller unit yung ibibigay and you are asked to make it bigger unit. Okay, so ano yung pwede natin gamit, uh, gamitin? I mean, okay, so I'll give you a method na mas easier in converting one object to another. So, it calls ladder method. So, in this ladder method, as you can see, meron siyang different prefixes. So, yung pinaka-high peak or high step ng ating ladder, ang nakalagay ay kilo yung prefix prefixes. Okay? Dito naman sa may low part or low step, ang nakalagay po ay mili. Okay, si mili kasi, sometimes, it use sa mga small thing or small unit. Okay, and kilo naman, ginagamit to sa mga bigger unit na. Don't forget na yung middle part natin or yung middle step, ang ilalagay natin dyan ay yung base unit. Kung ano ba yung susukatin natin, right? For example, uh, we are asked to measure the length. So, what is the base unit for length? So, that is the meter. So, ang ilalagay natin dito ay meter. Kapag ang sinusukat natin ay mass, we will put grams. Kapag naman ang sinusukat natin is capacity, we will use liter. Okay? So, uh, let us use this latter method in converting, uh, converting a unit. Okay, let us have the first problem. Convert 3 kilometers to centimeter. Okay, the given is 3 kilometers. Okay, nasa kilometer tayo. And we are asked to give our answer in centimeter. So, magkaiba yung hinihingi. So, now, using the laser method, pwede nating masagutan or pwede nating maibigay yung ating final answer into centimeter. Okay, again, so, ito po ang ating ladder method. So, the high step is the kilo, second is hecto, deca, and then itong middle part natin or middle step ng ating ladder method, dapat ang nakalagay po dito ay yung ating base unit. Next is deci, centi, and mili. Okay, since we are as uh, to measure the length, dahil ang given ay nasa meter and we all know that the base unit for length is meter. So, dito sa middle step natin, ang ilalagay natin ay meter. Kasi uh, nasa length tayo or we measure length. Okay. After putting the base unit in the middle step of this ladder, let us know what is given. So, the given is 3 kilometers or km to make it short. And then, we are asked to convert it into centimeter or cm. So, first thing na gagawin mo, identify where is kilometers or kilo. Okay, so ito siya nasa high peak. And then, identify kung saan mo siya i-convert, which is centimeter. Ah, saan ba yung centi? Okay, so the centi measure is here. So, ito yung centi measure. So, tinan mo kung ano yung distance between kilo and centi. Now, all you need to do is to make step or jump uh, until you reach the centi measure. So, from kilo, magja-jump ka lang until you reach the centi measure. So, don't forget to count your jump or to count your step. Okay, so, ito yung gagawin natin. So, from kilo, so, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, we made 5 steps until we reach the centi measure. So, yung jump natin from kilo to centi ay 5 and that way is from left to right. So, ito yung tatandaan natin kung ilang beses tayo nag-jump and then kung paano yung way natin. Is it left to right or right to left? Kasi yun yung gagawin natin in converting mamaya. Okay, so after uh, reaching 
our goal, which is the centimeter, we will use the given, which is 3 kilometers. So, yung 3, so this is 3. Now, identify where is the location of the decimal point. So, it says, in every whole number, the location of the decimal point is at the right part of each number. So, dahil ito ay whole number, wala naman tayo nakikita ang decimal point, ibig sabihin niya na, na ang decimal point nito ay nasa right side niya. So, ito yung decimal point. So, ilalagay mo lang para magkaroon ka ng uh, starting point ng pag-jump. So, kung babalikan natin kanina, from kilo to centi, we made 5 five, uh, five steps or 5 jumps. So, ayun din yung gagawin natin dito in converting. And, always remember kung ano yung way na ginamit natin or nagawa natin. So, dito, uh, ang way natin ay from left to right. 5 steps from left to right. So, ganun din yung gagawin natin dito sa may given natin. So, we will uh, jump 5 from left to right. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, lahat ng mga blank space eh, or mga spaces dito. So, para magkaroon siya ng value, we will put 0. So, lahat ng mga spaces, lalagyan mo lang siya ng 0. Basta may space. Eh. And that is, uh, lalo na kapag ka-counted siya sa ating steps na ginawa or jump na ginawa. So, this conversion is equivalent to 300,000. So, 300,000, so that is kilometer to centimeter. It means, 3 kilometers is equivalent to 300,000 centimeters. Okay? So, ayun po yung we using the uh, ladder method. Let us have the second problem. Hey, your mother wanted to make balinghoy puto. Every balinghoy puto needs 2,250 milligrams or mg for short of kamoting kahoy. How many grams or g of kamoting kahoy is needed for 12 pieces balinghoy puto? Now, what is balinghoy puto? So, this is an example of balinghoy puto. So, ito yon. Ito yung uh, one of our delicacies here in Montalban. Dahil maraming or malapit tayo sa mga mountains, so uh, marami yung nag, nagtatanim ng kamoting kahoy. So, ito uh, yung pinaka main ingredient kasi ng balinghoy puto is the kamoting kahoy. Eh, your mother wanted to make balinghoy puto. So, uh, let's help your mother in making... 12 pieces of balinghoy puto. So, again, using this ladder method, ilalagay lang ulit natin dito sa middle step kung ano yung base unit. As you can see, we're pertaining about the grams. So, kapag ang unit na ginagamit ay grams, ano kaya yung sinusukat natin? Is it the length, the mass, or the capacity? Okay, very good. So, we will measure the mass. So, the base unit for mass is grams. So, yun yung ilalagay natin sa middle part natin. Okay, grams. Okay, our given is 2,250 mg or milligrams. And we will convert this into grams for 12 pieces. Um... I ano natin ha, uh, remind natin na yung 2,250 milligrams ay para lang sa isang puto and your mother wanted to make 12 pieces. So, ilan kayang grams yung ating kailangan? Okay, identify the milligrams or the milli location. So, this is the milli location. And then, convert into grams. Asan ang grams natin? Ito yun, yung nasa middle part. So, hanggang dyan. Ayan yung dapat na i-reach natin. Now, let us make a step from milli to gram. So, uh, ito po yun. So, 1, 2, and 3. So, we made 3 steps from right to left. So, ayan yung ating way. Now, Using the given 2,250, 
identify muna natin yung decimal point natin. Again, in all whole numbers, the location of the decimal point is at the right, right side. So, dito natin matatagpuan yung ating decimal point. Now, balikan natin si ladder method. We use or we made three steps until we reach the gram unit from right to left. So, dito ang way natin from right to left and then uh, make three steps or three jumps. So, one, two, and three. So, the new location of the decimal point is between two and two. So, equivalent na siya into 2.25. Bakit nawala na yung zero? Every time kasi na nagiging decimal na yung isang number and zero yung nasa dulo niya or nasa likuran yung pinaka last value, pwede na siyang i-omit, pwede na siyang tanggalin kasi wala na siyang value. Okay? Pero pag whole number, yung zero, may value, may value po siya. Okay? So, it means... 2,250 milligrams is equivalent to 2.25 grams. So, ayun yung equivalent niya. Now, we are not yet done. Kasi, ang tinatanong sa atin ay uh, grams ng kamoting kahoy for 12 pieces of balinghoy puto. Each lang to, or, or kada isang puto is 2.25 grams ng kamoting kahoy. Eh, ang kailangan ay... 12 pieces. Yun yung gagawin ng, ng mga mo. So, how can we compute uh, uh, grams of kamoting kahoy for 12 pieces? So, simply, 2.25 grams multiplied by 12, kasi 12 pieces yung kailangan ng mama mo or ng mother mo. So, 2.25 times 12, the answer is multiplied 2.25 to 12 So, the answer or the result is 25, uh, 27 grams of kamoting kahoy. So, ayan yung kailangan niya for 12 pieces of balinghoy puto. Okay? Okay, for your quiz, you're going to convert or you, you will answer this activity entitled Convert Me. So, it has two parts. Yung first part, you're going to convert to the indicated unit of measure. So, number one, 66 liters is equivalent to how many milliliters? And number two, 708 millimeters is equivalent to how many meters? Or meter. And for the second part, solve the problem below. So, let me read the problem that you're going to solve for the second part. In these pandemic times, drinking 8 glasses of water a day is good for your health and will help to boost your immunity system. Each, if each glasses of water is equivalent to 148 ml, how many liters of water you need to consume every day? So, each glass of water ay 148 ml and you are asked to drink 8 glasses So, how many or what is the equivalent uh, liters is 8 glasses? So, ilan kaya ah, yung measure na or ilang liters kaya ang 8 glasses of water? Okay, so same process lang. You can use the ladder method para mas mabilis mong masagutan or may convert the following problem. I hope... You learn something about measuring or measurement today and use this for the future lesson na mai-encounter mo. Okay? So your answer uh, just send your answer into my Messenger account directly para ma-check ko yung inyong mga sagot. Okay? So thank you and God bless.